Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to the Feel Good Factor. I'm Susmita Veganosaurus, and I'm so glad you could join me here today. Hey, everyone! I'm so excited today about the guest. I know I always say I'm excited about the guest, but this is like an extra, extra special guest. It's one of my closest friends, Mahati Parashuram. She is about to take over to become the head of global public relations at uh, Grunfos. So I'm so proud of this woman. And, you know, Mahati and I have known each other since our school days. I'm not going to reveal how long that is, but... <laughs> You know, we've been friends for ages. We know each other really well. We say, share a lot of similarities in our journeys. And like, she's just one of my very, very closest friends. You know, Mahati is a pro at putting herself first, at self-care, at prioritizing herself. And I love seeing that about her. Pretty recently, she had a birthday. And every year with Mahati's birthday, she's like, this is my day. It's, you know, I'm the special person. So everybody better treat it that way. Everybody better take care of me that way. And I feel so good to see that, you know, she's she's a pro at that. Every year she does that. So, you know, just when the birthday got done, I'm like, hey, I have to interview you about this. And I, you know, all my listeners need to really feel inspired because she's going to show you how you can prioritize yourself and why you should be doing it. <laughs> So without further ado, here we go. Hey, Mahati. Hey, Sos. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. And thanks for the very kind introduction. Uh, yes, <laughs> we have known each other, I think, since forever. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to be talking to you on this podcast and not just our usual call. But let's see how it goes. <laughs> it's going to go awesome. I know that, knowing both of us. <laughs> <laughs> So, can you tell everybody a little bit about uh, yourself, your interests and things like that? So, about myself, where do I start? I think the best way to define myself is the things I care about deeply and the things I feel passionately about. And to begin with, I I would say that would be the people in my life. Um, And I I know you know this about me, but uh, I, I... I take a long time to let people into my inner circle. And these are people Mm -hmm. I really, really care about, family and friends. And uh, there's a blur there because some friends are like family. It takes a lot uh, for me to let people into the inner circle because that's where, you know, uh, my I think my walls are down. People get to know me. I get to know them. And it's something I've learned over the years is for me, my... Time is my currency in my life. And I'm very careful on how I use this currency of mine. So if I spend time with people, that means I really care about them. And um, that's very important to me. And the other thing uh, about people in my life is I always see what they can give me. And by give, I don't mean anything monetary. It's like, can they give me happiness, peace of mind? Uh, I think all relationships... um, it's important to get something out of it, you know, uh, and uh, you don't have to get everything from everybody at the same time. You have that one friend you call when you feel happy or you have that one friend who you will call only when you're feeling sad. So you have different things. So uh, for me, that's very, very important. So I would say you can define me uh, by uh, the company I keep. So family, friends, then uh, I love my work. My husband says that I'm married to my work and that's the first uh, <laughs> uh, first commitment. But yeah, it gives me a sense of purpose. Uh, uh, you know, it inspires me to do better. Uh, I like my work because I see the impact it has on my company or the people. Uh, so um, very passionate about that. And the other bit is travel and food. Uh, I love eating and I love traveling and taking in the culture and that's me. People, work, travel, food. Pretty much. <laughs> you forgot your you forgot your knitting because that's like your newest passion, right? Not newest. Yeah, I'm, I have my hobbies. Yeah, so knitting like really calms me. I, I love uh, making a lot of stuff. 
simple designs, nothing complicated so that I can be on autopilot when I'm knitting. So I like knitting. Uh, I picked mm-hmm. up embroidery recently after I think uh, school days. So that's something I've started. But yeah, I, I love knitting. Yeah, that that's me. It's a very difficult question when you have to answer about yourself. <laughs> No, it's not difficult and you answered very beautifully and, you know, pretty concisely because, uh, yes, you, you you noted what are the most important things. And, you know, when you ask people, okay, tell us about you, they'll talk about the work that they do, but you define yourself by the people in your life and that's kind of a beautiful thing and that is very important. You know, earlier when we were talking, you were saying that, it needs to be people who inspire and who bring out the best in you, right? And that's the kind of people you like to surround yourself with. Yes. How do you choose people? Like, I love that time is your currency thing. That is something I totally resonate with. It's so important to me. And it's something I've learned, to, you know, it's the hard way over the years, you know, and uh, giving time where you spend your time, who you spend your time with. It's so important because every interaction has to fill you up in a positive in a in a in a a good way in some way or another it has to help you in some way so i love that you said about you know time being currency so how do you choose who you're spending time with who you're not how do you choose who gets into your your inner circle uh it takes a long time to get into my inner circle i i don't trust very easily but once you're in uh, I'm sure you agree. I, you know, you're in, and it'll take a um. lot for you to get out. <laughs> and, uh, so yes, uh, for me, when I start any friendship, any relationship, you know, it takes time to get to know each other. And as you get to know each other, for me, one thing that stands out is how genuine the person is. And again, uh, how do they add value to my life? You know, do they? Do they bring happiness? Do they uh, help me laugh? Do they uh, help me learn about new things? Uh, I I try to focus on the brighter side. I like people who are open, positive, and to be honest, who are, uh, who don't try complicating things. I think uh, most relationships uh, get messy. Friendships, relationships get messy when it gets complicated. I like being clear and very, uh, transparent uh, so mm-hmm. and I hate playing games and mind games so I like people who are simple uh, and I think once um, those things are sorted then I know I can trust them I, I think post that is when they get into the inner circle mm-hmm. that that's a good really good way of looking at it because uh, yeah really we don't have the energy anymore to you know be playing games and all <laughs> <laughs> things you yeah. know no, really what we whatever we did in our 20s or the teenage years it's just not you know it's not healthy anymore to be in those kind of uh, um, relationships with people right so I, I love that you know the simpler your life is made by this person the better it is I know <laughs> and I think with especially the new friends right the old friends you've grown up with you know so mm-hmm. it's easier mm-hmm. to get along uh, that that comfort is there but when you're making new friends and especially at our age we ha- don't have that much of time and we don't have that much of um, patience in some cases to, <laughs> true, true. Uh, to you know put up with a lot of things so i think you we we tend to connect better with people who are similar to us or different uh, but who come with less complications you know no politics mm. you if you're if you're meeting friends you just want a simple evening you don't want the extra politics of who hates who and who do you need to <laughs> you don't want all that you just want to meet people and spend a little time and now anyway then you're not meeting anybody everything's virtual so mm. uh, but yeah someone who brings happiness and not more complications to our life. I mean, all of us have enough of things we're dealing with. So someone who can help lessen that uh, feeling of being alone or sad or whatever it is, is uh, who is worth spending sure. that currency of time on. 
and and you know i want to clarify this to the to everybody who's listening that yes mahati is talking about how people can add value to her life and how people can simplify her life and all that but also that's because she is an extremely generous friend you know emotionally available and and beautiful she she gives all this of herself too and therefore yes of course mahati it's you know you have a right to expect that out of others too you know that's what that's what uh, makes it and a lot of us we forget that whenever we get into any kind of relationship whether it's friendship or with family or a marriage or whatever even business relationships we only think of oh give 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 you know what what can we give and you know what can we put into this and it's it's nice to set these clear boundaries and have these clear values in mind that yes this is what i should get back also from this not just what i give but also this is what i should get back and it's nice to see the clarity you have on that and you know i i think that you know this is something that an activity that a lot of us need to sit and do we need to sit and write down you know put put it into words exactly the kind of people we want into our life the kind of traits we want into our lives and then consciously surround ourselves more and more with such uh, people and the the other ones you know the ones who bring in all the unnecessary drama and stuff they will they will automatically fall away as you keep adding more of the the you know the friends who uplift you right so the rest of them will just slowly disappear and dwindle away from your life you know as everybody can make out that you do value yourself you value your time you like to prioritize your happiness which comes down to your birthday and it it all ties into this right every year your birthday is like your birthday yes, <laughs> yes. so tell, tell us about that why, why is your birthday so important to you you're you're forgetting it's just not my birthday it's my happy birthday <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 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 <laughs> so my happy birthday, and again here, I think you should define what my birthday is. When it began, it was a day. Then it went on to a month, and now I'm trying to see. So I have my happy birthday month and my happy birthday week, and trying to make it into my happy birthday quarter. But my husband is not <laughs> being too supportive. He says <laughs> one month is all that he can do. <laughs> I don't think it's going to go to that Mahati birthday month I agree but going to birthday quarter pushing your luck a bit much don't no, you think last, last year I did manage to almost do it for a quarter so I wow. started off early and you know ended almost like towards December so I kind of managed a quarter but this year 2020 hasn't been kind to me but uh, hopefully next year <laughs> the corona can... virus ate your birthday quarter yes <laughs> God seriously but yeah my birthday's always always been special and it's evolved as well and um uh, I I remember when I was growing up oh god I loved loved my birthday so I, I and I think it's thanks to my parents and especially my mom for really making this day special I still remember you know uh I would uh, be so excited few days before my birthday because I, I I'd always know my parents would do something special and we'll always have our the birthday party and you know we'll uh, have friends over and decorations you know those old streamers we put them up and the balloons and uh, each year it was a lovely themed cake so you know a um, few days ahead we'd go and we'd pick out the cake and we stayed in a big joint family so everyone would be there i had a cousin almost my age so we'd have this huge celebrations friends over games and mummy would sit and make the menu so uh, uh, she'd get so creative with her cooking and years back i i remember one birthday she made donuts and then she made like this vegetable basket individual small vegetable basket kind of pastries so she would put so much effort into it but for me it was all about the birthday morning i'd wake up early but i would try my best not to open up open my eyes because uh, i knew mom would wake me up when she was ready and that meant she'd be decorating my uh, room there would be lights and something and my gift so till she woke me up i'd like try my best to keep my eyes shut then she would wake me up both my parents would sing to me which they still do uh, t- 
till date. They have to sing the entire birthday song. <laughs> And then I wake up and then I see my presence. And again, it's not about getting the gift. It's just the excitement of opening the gifts. I, so mm. I loved waking up to my birthdays. This continued through the years. And yeah, and then as I grew up, you know, with the school and college, celebrating it with friends. Oh my God, the adventures we've had for our birthdays, right? Some of which our parents know, some of which they don't. <laughs> but we had lots of fun, you know, and just the the whole day, you know, getting friends to spend time with you and making a uh, fussing over you and making the day special. And oh, my God, dressing up for our birthdays. I, I still remember the effort that went into it. And, and this is another thing I've um, got from my mom, like every birthday, everything has to be new. So from the toothbrush to the clothes to everything has to be new. So that's something I still, still follow. So, and then the morning dress and the evening dress, you know, so two outfits. And so it was just the excitement of celebrations. But as I think time passed, what I, I started realizing is all, all our life and most days, most months, we spend so much of time focusing on everybody we love, right? The family, the kids, the husband, the parents, uh, the work. You're giving so much of yourself to everybody that sometimes I think we forget to give the time to ourselves or the love to ourselves. That's something I've picked up over the last, I would say two decades, is to spend time valuing myself. And I take my birthday as, as the time to appreciate myself. So. For example, I buy myself a gift every year uh, because we're always buying everything for everybody else. So I make a special effort to buy myself something nice for my birthday. But also, why did this self-love happen? I, I, I must confess here is this happened because of my husband. He was the one who taught me to love myself above all. And... Um, he would always say, if you do not love yourself as much uh, more than anybody else, you won't be able to love others uh, as, uh, as much as you want to. So respect yourself, put yourself first. So, you know, if you, if you want to go out and do something, do it. If you need to take time off for yourself, do it. So over the years, he's, he's been someone who's been pushing me to do that. And, and um, I think I, I took that a f- step further and built on it and I used it to my advantage for my birthday so <laughs> that was a good selling point when I had to convince him we have to expand my birth happy birthday to a happy birthday week and then to a happy birthday month so then uh, I, I kind of arm twisted him into celebrating it uh, and making it special for me so <laughs> which the poor guy does he, he, he really really does uh, he's learned the hard way as well because I remember initially when we were newly married, he, he made the biggest mistake of forgetting to plan my birthday one, one year. And I think that was the last birthday he ever forgot to do something like that. <laughs> so since then it's, it's been smooth sailing. He actually starts planning almost a year ahead now, which is good. So yeah. it's like okay, either I celebrate all month long, or the rest of the eleven months I have to hear about it. Yes. So yeah, oh, my my sister oh. and him, you should see the happiness they 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 have when it strikes twelve post my birthday. So twelve <laughs> uh, midnight of twenty. 20- 7th of October. Oh my God, they're so happy. They actually celebrate that day. They're like, oh, we survived one year now. Let's <laughs> move on to the next. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, no, it's it's beautiful. See, I, I loved, you know, what you shared about your memories of growing up and all the happy birthdays with family and things like that. And a lot of kids do have that. Not Maybe not everybody, you know, for various reasons, but a lot of kids do have that. But you know, you have taken, so there are so many of these positive good things that our parents, elders, they teach us when we're young, Uh, you know, yes, you are important and you are special and you need to put yourself first. These are the messages we get out of these kind of celebrations. But as we grow up, 
we forget that and also i would say it's the same parents who end up putting you first over themselves or end up putting their spouse or you know somebody else over themselves that's what you're watching and then you you learn that and then you forget to put yourself first and i love how beautifully you have carried it through all the years you have carried it with you and then yes as you said you know ever since you got married it just like became better and better because of the encouragement you know because your people around you are actually encouraging this with. so it's but, like yes yeah. but 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 i think a um, couple of things uh, the the funny bit is um, I, i remember my son one, one one day he asked me he's like mama is my birthday more important than your birthday you know which one do you mm-hmm. love more So I looked at him and I said I love my birthday more because you always celebrate the creator first right like we we celebrate all the gods birthdays so mama made you so mama celebrates her birthday first but the second thing is I think the reason why everyone makes it special is again bringing it back to what you said it's any relationship is a two way relationship right uh it has to be I'm not saying everything has to be balanced, but when you give, you get to. So I, I guess it's it's the way that everyone wants to uh, make me feel special. Uh, I guess so. I'm I'm very appreciative about that. I I never take anything for granted. I'm very very appreciative about the people in my life and the things that they do for me. So yeah, and more than anything else, yeah, the fun, the parties, the gifts, the the time spent, and the efforts made. Yes, but it all just boils down to me celebrating uh, the fact that the people around me love me. Hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yes, it it comes down to that. There is self love, of course. You're buying yourself the gift. You're taking extra care of yourself and all those things. But yes, it's also a celebration of the people who love you in your life, and that's hmm. a very beautiful way of uh, putting it across. Not all of us remember to do this. We're like, ah, oh, okay, what? It's not a big birthday. It's just another birthday. So what's the big deal? Okay, a ah, simple little thing, and it goes away. But I've seen with you, it doesn't matter whether it is a like a the, the celebration of a decade or just some random year in the middle of the. No, 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 no. Every birthday is an important day. Every birthday is equally super, super important. Every Mahati happy birthday. Yes, yes, yes. And oh, yeah. I forgot to talk about my tiara. Oh yes, the yes. birthday tiara. Correct. How did I forget? Tell us about it. <laughs> yes. So this again was thanks to my husband. And sometimes I don't know why he does this to himself, but he, he goes that extra. Because he loves you. <laughs> yes. So uh, a few years ago, uh, he bought me my first tiara, which I started wearing. on my birthday and i wear it the whole day no matter where i go if i'm going out to a restaurant or a party or whatever the whole day i wear the tiara because i'm the happy birthday queen for the day <laughs> and um yeah so and he's he since bought me like uh, i think two more so i have like three tiaras and i and i love them and i remember when uh, we were celebrating my daughter's first birthday he went and he bought her a small tiara for herself and he said the princess should have one too so uh, she had the tiara for that but yeah one birthday i remember we were traveling and i i think we were in singapore and after getting to singapore i realized that i i had forgotten to pack my tiara i was so so upset we tried seeing if we could pick up something there but we couldn't and um, we landed up at universal studios <laughs> and the only tiara <laughs> there in the toy store was the fiona from shrek her her tiara with the shrek ears <laughs> but uh, yeah so that was the only your uh, your i did, did you get it did you get the no, shrek I, ears tiara <laughs> no but i did pose with it but i didn't wear it on my birthday because um, i wanted a actual nice tiara so that was the only <laughs> year that i missed wearing my tiara but otherwise yeah i i I love wearing it and it's nice because then you get those stares you get those uh, happy stares from people and then you have those confused stares and then you have some people giving you those looks like what the hell is wrong with her but I don't care I don't care I just want to wear my tiara and feel special and uh, important uh, the whole day <laughs> I love it I love it you know like who, who who cares what others think right like you are feeling so good you are feeling so happy 
those who can get inspired let them get inspired by it <laughs> exactly and invariably you land up uh, getting more happiness because someone at the hotel will come and ask you is it a special day and you tell them yes it's my birthday and then you get cake so why not <laughs> <laughs> I I hope everybody who's listening is going to get super inspired. I mean, I know you all these years but listening to you talk about it in so much detail is inspiring me. I'm like, "Hey, you know, I'm going to bloody make my birthday awesome every year too. And I'll be the queen, you know." Yes. And another thing that comes with the birthday is you have to start reminding people that it's your birthday much much ahead. So I even have a birthday campaign that starts right months ahead. I start telling people, "Hey, my birthday's around the corner. Let me know if I can help you. If you need any ideas, I'm here. If you need a sounding board too, you know, run your ideas by. Feel free to call me. And by the way, it's my birthday. So uh, there are so many people in my life who, um, you know, have now by themselves uh, over the years put their own reminders as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know ex colleagues who become friends friends and family obviously do not forget because you know, <laughs> they better not yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah this is just the things it's even like my dad he has to sing the entire happy birthday song when he wishes me so there are some things that are tradition they they have to go on <laughs> It's a beautiful tradition, and you know it's it's so nice to see over the years. I've I've seen you through your life. I've seen how much you've gone through. I've seen what you've done and how much you've achieved, and how what it has taken for you to reach this point in your life. And it's so important to celebrate this. It's so important to celebrate yourself, and it's beautiful, absolutely. And uh, what advice do you have for people you know if they want to do this how do they make themselves number one whether it's on their birthdays or whether ever like what kind of uh, self priority advice do you have for everybody a birthday is a nice time to take carve out that time i would say to celebrate yourself but i i think it has to be a ongoing process it's just not that one day or one month to be honest it's important to take that time off for yourself whenever you need it just time to think you know or just sit just calm calmly without anyone else take time out whatever makes you happy like uh, with my work before this year uh, when i used to travel a lot it, it, sometimes life can get crazy you're managing the home you're managing travel work everything but even the smallest of things uh, if it's you know getting to the airport half an hour earlier and getting that foot massage at the airport you know even that or just carving out some time telling your family you need some time you know sending them off on some errand and just sitting and having a cup of tea at home by yourself whatever it takes i think you need to carve out time for yourself and value yourself be it um you know the time you take for yourself or the investments you make for yourself and here again i'm not talking just about money but invest in yourself in terms of learning something new or spending time with your hobby or even spending time with people you love maybe that that's what you want to do take the time out uh, put yourself first and even in terms of feelings i think sometimes we we put ourselves uh, second sometimes you know my husband or my parents might feel bad if i do this S- sometimes it's important to say no l- let me do what makes me happy obviously not at the cost of hurting someone else but just putting yourself first so the decisions you make in your life so sometimes it's important to think about yourself and again i i definitely can't take credit for this uh, i wasn't like this uh, my husband was the person who pushed me to prioritize and put myself first so i'm very thankful and grateful for that but sometimes i think he he goes like i created a monster but Ha, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> he made me. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it doesn't matter, monster or not. He, whenever he looks at you, there are always these googly eyes and like, oh my wife. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad he did this for you. I'm glad he brought out this side of you where you know you know to prioritize yourself, put yourself first, love yourself first, and he is a keeper. I mean, it's it's rare to find people who will say. you know put yourself first above all else right so yes. that's a beautiful thing 
I hope everybody who's listening, you know, I hope you're all inspired. I hope you've all got some great ideas uh, to how to put yourself first. And uh, yes, you know, starting with your birthday is a very good, <laughs> good way to go about it. And uh, Mahati, thank you so much uh, for sharing this with everybody. I'm, is, there, is there anything else you'd like to add uh, before we close? Start researching on your birthday gift ahead of time, you know. Make sure it's really, really special. It could be a spa day. It could be a piece of jewelry you want to buy. Or it, it's something that you want to give to somebody who really needs it. But plan ahead. So there's something that you can look forward to. And plan your special day. This is one rule I have. For me, my birthday is very important because that's how the rest of my year goes. Uh, so I surround myself with all the people and all the things I want to do uh, in, the, in the whole year. And if not in person, I at least make sure I reach out to them and connect with them on that day. My birthday is the starting point of the rest of my year. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, that's that's a great way to look at it right at the beginning. You know, instead of a new year, your birthday is your new year to start with. That's that's nice. If people want to connect with you, you know, if, if uh, they want to reach out or follow you anywhere or anything, is there anywhere where they can do that? Um, to be honest, uh, I do have Facebook and Instagram, but it's closed. Uh, I I'm, again, I'm very, very uh, careful who I let into my life. But yeah, drop me, drop yeah. me a message on Facebook. And if, if, if I'm able to, I'll definitely, uh, you know, respond. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm there on LinkedIn, but that's more professional. So, but I'm oh, there. Yeah. You, can, you can contact. Sure, sure. And um, anyway, your name's going to be in the show notes so people know how to spell it and, <laughs> you know, and then reach reach out to you. Yeah, that's about it. Hey, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for letting me share. And oh, yeah, at some point, I will maybe get down to writing a book on how to celebrate your birthday. Let's see when I get Absolutely. <laughs> you should totally do that, you know. <laughs> that would that would be great. A book or maybe even you should start writing a blog, you know, on, about it and uh, write, make pointers. It's, it's a great topic, actually. <laughs> I know. That, that's one thing I have to make time to do my, my writing, which I haven't in a while. But yeah, I'll get mm-hmm. to at some point. Mm-hmm. You are a good writer. So, you know, like back in school, both of us used to write poems and share with each other and stuff. So definitely, and I know that it brings you joy. So you should definitely make time for that, you know. And it, it if it's going to help others, inspire others, then more so reason to do it. Definitely. We'll try. <laughs> cool. All right. Bye, Mahati. Bye. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode of The Feel Good Factor, Rate, review and subscribe on your preferred podcast platform, especially Apple Podcasts. If you'd like to be notified about the upcoming episodes of The Feel Good Factor, subscribe to my mailing list on my website veganosaurus.com V-E-G-A-N-O-S-A-U-R-U-S dot com Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Feel Good Factor. I'm Susmita Veganosaurus and I'm looking forward to talking to you again very soon. Bye!